Well, I want to welcome everybody to our last iLearn class in the theater of the cruise. Aww. And today we are going to be talking about email providers. Now this is the big 10,000 pound elephant in the room, as John just said, and this is the truth. A lot of your tried and true email providers very soon won't exist anymore. Now every single cruise, people come and they give me their business cards. I have a couple business cards in my pocket that people have given me over the years. Uh, actually over the last three weeks or so. And I'm going to tell you something about my generation. And my generation, I mean people that are pretty much less than 40 years or so old. We judge you based on your email address. If you say you want to do business with me and you hand me a business card that has anything other than Gmail or your own company on it, what do I do with that business card? Throw it out. Throw it out. Uh, if you hand me a business, if you hand me a resume and you say you want to work in the island and you got anything but a Gmail address in it, what do I do with that resume? Toss it. Who gave me a business card? I got this nice, lovely couple from last cruise and they had a yahoo.com email address, so I was just like, bye. My friend John O has his own email address, so John O at johnosings.com. He's really good. He's cool. Problem is, a lot of you made business cards for a lot of times over the years. So we had uh, Marge, Marty Jones, who had Marty Jones at Cox.net. But here's what's really cool. This is why I didn't throw this one out. You see that little arrow right there that she drew in a pen? <laughs> After this class, she wrote her Gmail address right on the back. <laughs> so I was willing to hold on to that. But what I want to do today is I want to talk about email providers, because the internet in its most basic form has to do with email. But we need to go a little bit back in time first. So we probably all remember back in the day these wonderful noise, noises. Welcome, you have mail. We all lived through that. Some of you are still living in that. But here's the thing that's very important. The internet has not fundamentally changed since those days. I think that's what people don't understand. If you remember when you used to use dial-up internet, in your area code, in your zip code, in your code, you'd have a certain number of different phone numbers that you could dial up. You have a certain number of phone numbers that you dial up right there. And if one of the phone numbers was slow, what would you do? Hang up and go to the next one and hang up, and go to the next one, and hang up, and go to the next one. You don't dial up anymore, but whether you're using a cell phone, whether you're using a satellite, no matter what you're using, you still have to get to somewhere. You still have to get to one of these servers right here. And one of the questions I get asked all the time on the ship, and I think this is a valid question, is they go, well, how fast is the internet on the ship? And my response is, it depends where you're accessing. If you access a company that has a bunch of these places, the shortest distance between two points is what? A straight line. Here's the problem. Back in the day, AOL had all of these different things. But now, do you know how many they have? About oh, three or so? You're starting to shut them down because here's the thing. To run an email service, it costs money. If you're not paying a company, do they have the money to run that email service? No, so what I want to do is I want to give you a little idea of how AOL and Yahoo make money and where things are headed, just to give you a little idea. So both AOL and Yahoo are, well, AOL's already acquired. Yahoo is in the midst of being acquired by a phone company called Verizon. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's the American phone company. Uh, it, it is the first uh, subscriber loss. Verizon has hit the top of the curve, and they're going to take a sharp dive down very, very soon. If you have Verizon stock, it's time to sell it. But uh, the idea is, I want to show you a bit about AOL and Yahoo and what's going to become of them so you understand. This is the front page of AOL. It is filled with a video of, I did not fake this. I'm opening this up right now. There are two dogs wrestling on the front page of that email provider. Can that legit... I didn't plan this. <laughs> Is that a legitimate email provider? Here's the problem. This page of AOL.com is filled with ads, 
filled with crap, filled with things that track you. Do you know why Verizon is buying AOL and Yahoo? To track all of you. To become Google, to become Facebook. It's a good strategy, but they're going to combine your phone's location together with your computer's location, together with whatever you search for. But if you look at all of this mess on this page, about 40% of what you see are ads on that page. Now AOL, how many, is anybody in this room still paying for AOL? Oh God. <laughs> you know why he's paying? So he can get support. When my mom calls me and says she has trouble with her email, I go, your Gmail or your AOL account? She goes, my AOL account, and you know what? You shouldn't do this on your mother, but they made this red button on your phone just to hang up on people. As soon as my mom says, I'm having trouble with my AOL account, I say, call AOL support. Why I say that is there's no such thing as AOL support anymore. AOL got rid of most of their support team, to be completely honest. But you can see this is the front page of AOL, and it's an absolute mess. Now I'm going to switch over to the front page of Yahoo. No dogs dancing, but an absolute mess with ads. That's all these are, is their advertising platforms. Now what you need to realize is back in the day, both AOL and Yahoo were search engines. You know, you could go and you could search for things on AOL and Yahoo. You can still search for things on AOL and Yahoo, but you know who actually powers that search engine? Google. You're sitting around with your AOL and Yahoo account and you're saying, well, I didn't know they were dying. And the answer is, you killed them. You decided it was better to use Google than to use anything else in the world. Now, what's happening is Verizon is merging AOL and Yahoo into a new company this summer. All they've said is this summer. Summer starts in June. It's called Oath.com, O-A-T-H.com. So it says summer 2017, you can see this, and it says Oath.com, a Verizon company. The name is out, the launch will follow, the opportunity starts now. Run. <laughs> Run as fast as you can away from this. This is a minefield waiting to happen. What Verizon has done is they have combined all the properties that both AOL and Yahoo own such as the main front page of advertising of AOL, Yahoo Sports, the Huffington Post, Engadget, Verizon Digital Media Services, which I'm going to translate to Verizon's ad tracking service that tra tracks you around and figures out where you are and serves ads in that way, Autoblog, even our absolute favorite AOL property called Movie Phone. Hello, you've reached Movie Phone. They've combined that all together in a new company called Oath. Let me tell you what's not in that list right there. AOL Mail, Yahoo Mail. Those cost the company money. They're going to make an Oath.com mail, and whether your email transfers over or not is a good thing, but I want you to think about this. For the first time ever, Verizon lost money this last fiscal quarter. They are the new parent company of AOL and Yahoo. Is it safe to be in with a company that lost money? that's losing subscribers? Or are you just taking the inevitable and you're making the inevitable come anyway? So here's the real answer. It says right on their page, OATH.com, coming summer 2017. It says nothing about AOL email. It says nothing about Yahoo email. They have declined to publicly comment. Here's the thing. If this happens and you don't move your things over, guess what happens to your entire life on your old email provider? It's gone. Now, I've talked about AOL and Yahoo, I want to go ahead and I want to talk a little bit about Outlook.com, which also used to be known as Hotmail. Now let me show you the old page for Outlook.com, which was MSN.com. Ads, 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 more ads, ads, ads for eBay, sponsored ads, and MSN.com was part of the Hotmail family of companies. Then Microsoft had a little problem about two summers ago. Do companies change their name when they're doing well? When companies get hacked to smithereens, do they change their name from Hotmail.com to Outlook.com? If you know anything about two summers ago, people's accounts were absolutely destroyed. Half the Hotmail accounts were completely hacked. Much like Yahoo, is anybody still actively using a Yahoo account? Do you not read the news? Everybody can check your Yahoo email except you. 
uh, let's be completely honest, one of the least secure things you can do is use that. But this is the old MSN.com, which went to Hotmail, and this is the new Outlook.com. Where are the ads? Anybody see the ads there? There's no ads. It's completely empty, but here's the thing. There's a very scary button that showed up right here very, very recently. If I zoom in right here, very scary button says premium. You see that? I'm going to zoom in. It says premium. When a company has no ads and offers a premium service, what's going to happen to the free users? It's in Hotmail's terms and conditions that they can terminate at any time your Hotmail account, including all of your contacts, all of your saved email, all of everything. It's in every single one of these email providers' positions that they can do those things. Here's the problem. Those are the big email providers in the world, and they are all essentially now financially insolvent. Now, I had an argument, well, a, a, a lack of agreement with someone the other night that said Microsoft's going to keep Hotmail around to keep the Office brand around. Here's the thing. The future of Microsoft is, well, the presence of Microsoft is Office, and the future of Microsoft is actually something really cool called the HoloLens, which you put on your head and it gives you an augmented reality. I can see different windows and space and stuff like that. But Microsoft doesn't have much of a future in the free email business. But when you come to emails, you are judged based on your email. I will give you a perfect example. My dad, he used to work for a little company that some of you might have heard of before called Arthur Anderson. They were involved in this little thing called Enron that nobody's ever heard of before. He was not personally involved in Enron, just his main company was involved in Enron. So my dad was involved in this little thing called Enron. He goes ahead and he sends out his resume with his email address at AOL.com after Arthur Anderson doesn't exist anymore. Do you know how many calls he got back? Zero calls got back to his head. Now we sent out the same resume with a gmail.com. And you think everyone called him back? They did. Because the people sitting in the mail room, you know what age they are? My age. The people sorting through the first layer of these things are my age. Here's the thing. There is a grading system in email providers. A failing score would be an email provider that doesn't exist anymore. Some of you might have, I, when I was in Alaska a few years ago, someone comes to me, they go, I need to check my email. It's with Juno. I said, ma'am, I know where we are today. Who's your email provider? That was a bad joke, it felt flat, sorry. <laughs> we were in Alaska, the capital of Alaska is Juno. I know where we are today. If you have to explain the joke, it's not fun. Uh, that's a failing rate. A D, which is a, Still a failing rate is being with your email provider, being with Comcast, being with, uh, being with Cox, Bell, Shaw, Talus, anyone like that, because here's the thing, it shows that you didn't go make anything other than what you were given. And what it also shows is that you are having a very high switching cost. Something we'll talk about a bit later is that Google is going to eventually become your internet provider at home. You're not going to have Bell or Shaw or Talus or Cox, they're all going to go away. Google will be your internet provider all over the world. I'm not just talking about the United States. A C, which is barely a passing grade, is AOL and Yahoo, but that's AOL, Yahoo, and Hotmail. A B is Gmail. And a passing grade, an accolade of an A, is being at your own domain. Do any of you have one that's at your own domain? So that's at yourname.com. Now, you have, this is very strange that I do this, but I do this all the time. I actually give out my email address. It is actually on the papers which are in the back of the room. There's enough for you to all get them. Don't worry, there's a couple hundred of them and I'll print more if I need to. I've got my own domain at whatever.com. But we've talked about why these guys aren't going to exist much longer. I could say very clearly Verizon has said summer 2017 for AOL and Yahoo. Whatever that means, that's up to your own interpretation. My feeling is by the end of June, those companies will no longer exist. Uh, Hotmail is going to very slowly take from the free users, remember all these servers? Right now, Hotmail slash Outlook, you have all these servers. What's going to happen is the paid users are going to get all these, and the free users are going to be relegated to these two. And then eventually, what's going to happen? If you don't pay, it's going away. 
Now, here's the thing. How does Google offer email for free? Now, Google is the second largest company in the world, only bested by this little company called Apple. Everything we've been talking about is the two largest market cap companies on the planet. Just to give you an idea in size and scale, we all know about iCloud. You've heard of iCloud before, right? People spent more money in October, November, and December of last year on increased iCloud storage than Verizon paid for AOL and Yahoo combined total. Three months of iCloud spending was more than Verizon paid for AOL and Yahoo total. Think about that for a second. But here's where things get interesting. Let's go to the front page of Google. Because I went to AOL.com, I went to Outlook.com, I went to Yahoo.com, I go to Google, and I get beautifulness, emptiness, a picture of Pluto, which is no longer a planet or a space probe or something like that, and the main part of Google is Google search. So I just want to talk for a couple seconds how Google makes money. Let's just say we go ahead and we type in transatlantic, L-A-N-T-I-C, cruise. So I've gone ahead and I've typed in transatlantic cruise. Is it any randomness to the order that those search results showed up? Or are people paying for those search results to show up? They're paying. The order of the, these search results showing up is very truly and clearly an ad. So if I zoom in, let's look at the first one. EuropeCruises.com, transatlantic cruises, ad. Transatlantic Cruises, cscanner.com, ad. Save 70% off Transatlantic Cruises, ad. Anytime you click on one of those, Google makes money. Google does not need to put advertising directly in Gmail or directly in Google Photos because their search business subsidizes all of their other businesses. Does that make sense to us all? We all use Google search. It is not giving you the best result you searched for. It is giving you the result that someone paid the most for. Just for fun, let's go ahead and let's put in something a little bit more relevant. Uh, let's put in uh, Caribbean, C-A-R-I-B-B-E-A, -E I can't spell. I think I got it. Even if I can't spell, guess what, Google's gonna correct it for me. But if I type in Caribbean cruise, the first hit, Royal Caribbean rates, but it's not Royal Caribbean. It is a company called cruiseline.com forward slash Royal Caribbean. And the second thing is Royal Caribbean, to give you an idea. But I can put in even something as simple as cruise. And how that shows up is completely dependent on who pays the most money to be there. Here's the thing. The only free email provider that is left that is still fiscally solvent is... Gmail. Now, if you have Comcast, Bell, Shaw, Telus, anything like that, you want to run from those as quick as you can. Because here's the thing. How many of you, someone's come into your area with a better price for internet or a better price for TV than who you already have? I'm sure a lot of you that's happened before. You won't admit it, but it's happened before. And you go, well, I'm not going to leave Comcast because everybody has my Comcast email address. It's called a switching cost. If you have Gmail, you can access Gmail across any internet, anywhere in the world, which is really quite cool. So I'm gonna show you how Gmail works, how to set up a Gmail account, how to do all of that, but before we do that, it's time for a toast. <laughs> now, this is my favorite Celebrity Eclipse souvenir. It is the Celebrity Eclipse hip flask, and uh, it's time for a little toast uh, for the death of AOL and the death of Yahoo, and the eventual death of Hotmail. And one of the nice things, they have a couple of these left in the shop, and if you come and you mention Richard sends you, they'll give you 10% off, which is pretty cool. Because I talked to the shop guys, I said, this is my favorite thing, because here's what's cool. Not only is it a hip flask, not only does it have the Celebrity Clips logo in it, but it also has a built-in shot glass. <laughs> My drink of choice is Malibu Pineapple Soda. I had it made down at the crew bar this morning. You gotta, why are you drinking this early in the morning? I go, well, because I work on a cruise ship. He goes, well, it's before noon, you're an alcoholic. I go, no, my friend. 
I work on a cruise ship. I'm not an alcoholic. I'm a pirate. Uh, so, <laughs> I go in. AOL, Yahoo. <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> Outlook slash Hotmail. <sighs> Comcast, <laughs> the worst company in America. <laughs> oh. Uh oh, got one more. Carnival? <laughs> <laughs> so this is really cool. This is the Celebrity Eclipse Kit Blast. And I absolutely love it. They sell it in the gift shop, in the liquor shop. Who would have thought they sell it in the liquor shop? And so the liquor shop on deck four. If you mentioned you came from the island, they'll give you 10% off on it. Makes a great gift. I gave it to all of my alcoholic relatives, and they absolutely love it. And then what they, you know why they love it? Because when they come cruising, guess what? They're not alcoholics. They're pirates. There we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's talk about setting up a Gmail account. Now how we set up a Gmail account is we go to gmail.com. And we go to gmail.com, you're gonna give it your first name, you're gonna give it your last name, and then you're going to choose a username. Very specific, when you put in your first name and your last name, and we'll get to why this is later, you need to put in the name that you're known by. The name people will know you. So if your name is Robert, but you're known as Bob, put in Bob. That makes sense. If your name is Richard, but you're known as Dick, you're in the wrong generation, <laughs> let's be completely honest. Now we're going to choose our username next. Are we going to get our first choice of username at this point in time? No, because no, you're a little bit late to the party. In your username though, we do not use your birthday. You're laughing? Here's the thing. What's one of the security questions they ask to reset your account? Your birthday. In your username, we don't use the birthday. Then it's going to ask you to create a password. Here's the thing. For some things, your password is not important. For your Gmail address, it is extremely important. My Netflix password is, well, was, I'll tell you what you're doing. My Netflix password was Netflix password. <laughs> then my sister started watching a bunch of crazy stuff on my account. So I had to make a new Netflix password. And she kept asking me, what's the new Netflix password? And I said, I have no clue what the new Netflix password is. No clue. New Netflix password? What are you talking about? New Netflix password? Guess what the new Netflix password was? <laughs> new Netflix password. There's certain things that we don't care about to give you a little idea there. But when we go in and we're making a password, your password for your Google account needs to have a capital letter, a lowercase letter, a number, and a symbol at a minimum, and it needs to be at least eight characters, because here's the thing, everything else is tied to your email provider, correct? Your bank account, your utility bills, everything is tied to your email provider. So if someone gets your email and resets your password, can they go reset the password at your bank? Yes, they can go reset the password at your bank. Now, Gmail itself uses very high encryption. You're not, here's the thing that people always ask me, they go, is this safe? I can guarantee you, Gmail is safer than your bank. Now, am I ever going to say that anything is unhackable? No, I'm not that dumb. Uh, but I'm never going to say that anything is unhackable, but it's a lot safer than anything else that you use, to give you an idea there. So I'll give you the first, three, first four characters of my password, which are very, very easy. It's a capital R, a lowercase l, and a dollar sign, because my initials are R, L, S. And then I have the first number, which is a three. I refuse to give you the rest of my password. Those are actually the first four characters of my actual Gmail password, which you can reset everything from. It's then going to ask for your birthday. Google does not care how old you are. Give it your real birthday. You know, a lot of people, they fake birthdays. And if you fake your birthday, you know what happens when you forget your password? You can't get your password when you forget your password. So when you, when you, you want to make sure you put in the right birthday. Again, after that, you want to make sure that you put in your gender. I am male, female, or if you want to, other, or rather not say. 
Then it's going to ask for your mobile phone number. Make sure you choose the right country and you put in your mobile phone number in the right country because if you forget your password, it will send a text message or a voice call to your phone in order to reset it. It's then going to ask for your current email address. If it's AOL, Yahoo, or Hotmail, don't bother. Don't bother. It's just there for fun. And then it'll ask for your location. Now, once you have that, it's going to make you a Gmail account. Now, I know what a lot of you in this room have is you have a dormant Gmail account that you don't use because your kids set you up with it years ago and said, Mom, it's time to get off of AOL. My mom has one of those too. She hasn't left AOL yet. She goes, I don't believe you that AOL's going away. Do any of you not believe me? Okay. If you don't believe me, I've got, the, I've got something to sell you, some magic beans. They're, they're right in the back of the room. There's a giant bean stock that's going to grow, and there's a giant that has gold upstairs. When a company, when two companies are sold for less than Apple makes an iCloud in a single fiscal quarter, they're dead. Uh, and they're getting bought by a company that is dying. So we're going to go in, and this is my Gmail account. But most of your Gmail accounts, I'm not going to zoom in because I don't need to read my email, but most of your Gmail accounts will be much emptier if it's not your primary account. So the question then comes to, how do you move everything over from your AOL, from your Yahoo, from your Hotmail, from these other providers like that? Here's the thing. You need to move the things over while those providers still exist. Does that make sense? Because can you move something over when something no longer exists? No. This step you must do from a laptop or a desktop computer. You cannot do it from an iPhone, from an iPad, from an Android phone, because it requires a pop-up. So it requires a pop-up, which is something you can't get. I'm going to zoom in. In the upper right-hand corner of the Gmail application, there's a little gear icon. You see the little gear icon right there? If I click right there, there's something inside of there that says settings. So I'm going to wait for the settings to come up. Give it just a second. There's something that says settings. And inside of settings, there's something that says accounts and import. Ah, I hit the wrong button. Hold up. We're going to go to settings. Oh, no. We're going to go to settings and accounts and import. Then there's a button that says import mail and contacts, and we're going to talk about importing mail and contacts from another provider. So we're going to click right here where it says import mail and contacts. It's a big thing. And it says uh, import mail from another address, and it's going to say you can import your mail and contacts from your AOL, from your Yahoo, from your Hotmail, from all of these other providers like this. Now you see it came in a pop-up window, which is something you can't generally get on a phone or a tablet. You're then going to put in your email address for any email provider you happen to have. Mine is another Gmail account. Rickshill at gmail.com. This is my old email address. Don't write this down. I have my new one written up. And I go ahead and I hit check. And then once I do that, it's going to ask me a couple of interesting questions. I should go back to the easy way. Okay. It's going to say, let me zoom in. Do select the import options for richshill at gmail.com. Do I want to import all of my contacts? Yes. Do I want to import all of my old mail? Yes. Do I want to continue to import all of my new email for as long as I can actually do it, which is in this case, it only gives you the authorization for 30 days. It will continue to import your new email for the next 30 days into your Gmail. Can you go back and do this more than once if you need to? Yes. It's designed as a transition tool. You don't want to go back and do 30 days every 30 days, but what it's going to do once it does that is it's going to suck all of your email into your Gmail account. So it's going to suck all of your email from your AOL, from your Yahoo, from your Hotmail, from anywhere like that into your Gmail account. Now, the cool thing about Gmail is it sorts your good email from your crap, and there are some emails in Gmail that you will never see. So I mentioned in the last class about my evil grandmother. I have a nice grandma, and I have an evil grandma. Now, evil grandma has an AOL account. And evil grandma, I only call two times a year. I call her on my bir after my birthday, and I call her after Christmas. Because I have to call her and thank her for the $100 check she sent me in mail since I was young. 
So I called Grandma Chris this time. A lot of people think this story I'm about to tell is not a true story. I promise you. I told it to a couple crew members. It's gotten all over the ship. I called Grandma Christmas time. Now last year I was in the I was in the Baltic on this ship on the Eclipse. I called Grandma Christmas time. She said, Oh hi Richard, it's so nice to hear from you in my twice yearly call. I call her December and I call her June to give you an idea. She goes, It's so nice to hear from you in your twice yearly call. She goes, I'm so glad you're not stuck in South America anymore. I go, well I was in South America. And then I hear one of the funniest stories that's ever happened to me in my life. She gets an email in her AOL account claiming to be from some authorities in South America. No country, just South America, because they have the same police all over South America. Your son, not your son, your grandson, who works on a cruise ship, do you know how they know this? Because they hacked her Facebook account. They hacked her Facebook account. They didn't hack her Facebook account through Facebook, they hacked her Facebook account through her AOL password, just to give you an idea. So they hacked her Facebook account, and they say, your grandson is being held hostage in South America. You need to pay us $10,000, or we're going to kill your grandson. Call us at this number. She calls. She calls. It says, don't tell anyone. Don't tell his father, don't tell anyone, or we're going to kill him. Now, remember, I only talk to her twice a year, so, you know, and she only gives me $100, so she was going to give me ten grand. The problem is, I'm the only one that can bring on uh, the family name, because everyone else is granddaughters. So, everyone else is granddaughters. I think that's what she's hoping to do. But, uh, so she calls them, and they're like, go, go to the bank and send the money to this place, and da da She doesn't tell anyone. She actually gets $10,000 together. Okay, she actually gets ten thousand dollars together. She goes to the bank. Now before she's about to make this transaction, the teller tries to stop her and tell her it's a scam. She says no. And then the teller says to her, You know what you should do? You should ask the scammers to speak to your grandson. Now remember, she only speaks to me twice a year. So <laughs> you should ask the scammers. So she doesn't go to sell my let's be honest. You should ask the scammers to speak to your grandson. And we go, and this was one of the most amazing things. So some guy gets on the phone. Sounds like an American guy. <laughs> Grandma, I am so scared. <laughs> the drug dealers I got off the ship. I was on a short excursion and they 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 took me. Grandma, send the money now. I love you. She said, "That's not my grandson. He's never said I love you to me." <laughs> I wish I made that story up, but it's 100% true. That's what makes it so great. But here's the thing. It's a true story. If you have a Gmail account, you will never see crap like that. And what's cool is Gmail will automatically organize your email for you. I know some of you are sitting in this crowd that have thousands of unread emails. I haven't checked my email in days, and I have Somewhere between four and five emails. That's it. But I get emails from people all the time. Here's the cool thing. When you have a Gmail account, it automatically sorts your email into primary, social, and promotions. So primary is email from people. So if you, if you send me an email, it's going to show in primary. If any of you in this room send me an email, I have my email address on the back of the sheet. You send me an email, it shows in primary. I'll give an example. Let me pick something safe. Uh, someone sent me, hi Rich, awesome is not normally a word I use, but I've been blown away by your knowledge and skill, engaging others to learn more about the digital world. Me included. I've watched a number of your videos on YouTube and seem to recall you saying da 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 da. Brilliant, keep up the good work. Now that's an email from a person. That shows in a primary inbox. The person sends me an email. Now the next inbox is the social inbox. Now this shows on gmail.com. I'm going to show you how to get it on your phone in just a minute's time. And this is stuff from Facebook, from Twitter, from all these places. Then you have promotions and updates. Promotions are people trying to sell you things. The promotions is, hey, there's a new iPhone, or hey, there's a new iPad, come buy the new iPhone or the new iPad. Updates are, hey, you bought the new iPad, here's your receipt. Hey, you bought the new iPad, this is when it shipped. Hey, you bought the new iPad, UPS came to your door, but you weren't there to sign, so we're going to come back in three weeks. 
That's what happened the last time I got an iPhone. Uh, so UPS came inside. So these are updates. And the last tab is forums. So these are all of the forums that you go if you're on Cruise Critic or anywhere like that. You have all kinds of different forums. Now here is the problem that we have. Let me put this up on the screen. Here's the problem that we have. Some of you are using it. Let me make sure that goes up on the screen. Time machine real quick. I'll go back and take care of that. Okay. Let me zoom out real quick. Some of you are going, well, I've never seen that sorting in my Gmail before. Where is that sorting in my Gmail? And the answer is, I'll tell you where that sorting is not. To access your Gmail, even those of you who have Gmail probably don't know this, you should not be using this app on your phone. That is the wrong app to use to access your Gmail. Very few people in this room knew that. Now, Google sent an email telling everyone what you need to use to see your Gmail is the Gmail application. Now, let's talk about the difference between these two applications. You'll see in the mail application, I have 120 unread emails. In the Gmail application, I only have four. And I actually took a lot of those and I marked them as unread just to give you an idea. I open up those four and that whole sorting function, the primary inbox, and so this is my primary inbox, and you'll see all the things in my primary inbox. And then I've got my social inbox, my promotions inbox, my updates, and my forums. Now here's the thing, you still need to set up that blue email app, because that's going to synchronize your contacts and your calendars and all those other things with Gmail, and if you send a picture, if you want to email a picture to someone, and you don't have the blue email app set up, it gets a little, uh, but for checking your Gmail on a daily basis, you actually don't want to use this. Just so you know, the same exact account is set up in mail and is set up in Gmail. Now, I should just move them closer together. There we go. So the same exact account is set up in both of those email providers right there, but you see there's a major difference in managing what's going on there. So email from people will automatically come to your primary inbox in Gmail, and you can read all of these things to go what's going on. So any suggestions here? Someone sent me something interesting. But I can go in and I've got everything just like that. You can run multiple Gmail accounts inside of the Gmail app, which is very nice as well. I have three or four different Gmail accounts that run inside the Gmail app. If you've already installed Google Photos, your Google account is already signed in, you don't need to do anything else. But now comes the question that everybody asks me. Okay, I've switched to Gmail. How do I let everybody know that I switched to Gmail? Do I need to make an automated email? Do I need to do this? Do I need to do that? And the quick answer is not really. When you send an email to somebody, you generally don't address it to their email address. You address it to their name. This is why I said earlier in the class, you need to make sure that you use a person's name when you send them an email. Thusly, let me give you a little idea. If I open my Gmail app and I start typing in my sister's name, J-U-L-I-E-S-H, Julie Shillington, that's my sister. Let me turn it sideways. You'll notice that she has two email addresses. Now she's 18 years old, so when she was about eight, she signed up for this thing, a really high-end service at the time. It was called AOL. <laughs> The greatest April Fool's joke I ever played. I taught this class in Celebrity Central, but I spent 12 minutes of it talking about how great AOL was right at the beginning. Oh yeah, it was fantastic. I did it less than a month ago. Uh, it's on the YouTube channel, which I'll tell you about in a minute. But I can go in and here's the thing. Julie Shillington right there, she has two email addresses. TennisJAS at AOL.com and JulieShills at gmail.com. Which one's showing first? Her Gmail address. Here's the thing. When you type in someone's name, it is always going to recommend the email address the last time they sent you an email. Does that make sense? It's going to recommend the email address of the last time they sent you an email automatically. Are there still going to be stragglers that are going to send things to your AOL and your Yahoo account? Yes. That's why you need to start the transition now because when they no longer exist, what's going to happen? You're going to lose those stragglers forever. Now you can still check your AOL or your Yahoo account once you have a Gmail account. You can import an unlimited amount of accounts. So when you send someone an email, let's say you have, 
Let's say I had an AOL address, I send you an email. When you reply back to that email, it will automatically reply if you use the name back to the last email address that's sent to you. That is the easy part. Doing that is the very easy part. Getting that in and doing all that, as weird as that sounds, it sounds like it would be the hard part, but it's the easy part. And that you can correct easily. Here's the thing that's a lot more difficult. You need to change the email that's registered with companies. That's a manual process. You need to change the email for your Apple ID. You need to change the email for your Captain's Club account. Because if you have an AOL or a Yahoo address and you forget your password for Celebrity Cruises and you get forgot password, where do they send the forgotten password? To your AOL account. As of right now, you can get that password. I'll give you an example. AOL and Yahoo, I have people all the time that forget their Apple password and we reset it through AOL and Yahoo. It takes about seven minutes to get the password reset link through AOL and Yahoo. It's about three seconds to get that Apple password reset link from Gmail, to give you a little idea. So one of the main things you need to change is your Apple password. Now, if you have an Android device, you're likely already using a Gmail account. And how you, not your Apple password, your Apple email account. So to change the Apple email account, all you have to do is put in my Apple ID. My Apple ID and it should find a website. I'm gonna load it up real quick. It should find the website for managing your Apple ID. I've got a lot of security on my Apple ID, so give it just a couple seconds time. My Apple ID. And it'll find the website for managing your Apple ID. Now, the important thing about, let me find the, well, it's loading because it's, it, the Apple ID website wants to make sure exactly where you are in the world, which is something it cannot do on a cruise ship. So it's appleid.apple.com, and you're gonna sign in with your Apple ID and your password, and it's gonna ask you to change your primary email address. You're gonna change that to your Gmail address. Now, why I want to open it, again, it's very strange because it's got a lot of security behind it, and what it's trying to do is it's trying to find my location as it opens the site. So it's not as easy as one would think to actually get to the My Apple ID site because it's like, where are you located? And I go, I don't really know where I'm located. So I'm going to try for a second. But when I go into the My Apple ID site and I sign in with my Apple password, it's actually not going to let me in right away. It's going to want me to verify from a device that I already have. It's something called two-factor authentication. How many of you have seen that before? By the end of this year, if you sign into a new device and the company is not asking for two-factor authentication, should you be doing business with that company? No. Two-factor authentication is very, very useful. I have two-factor authentication enabled on everything. I'm going to tell you something that a lot of people think is absolutely crazy for me to say. My Apple password, Apple doesn't like where we are right now. My Apple password is Apple Password 7 with a capital A in Apple. Uh-oh. I just gave you everything. You know my email address. You know my password. No one would be dumb enough to give you that information, would they? I have to have a second step of verification. So even if you were to sign in with my Apple account with the right username or password, it's going to notify me on all my Apple devices, and I have to approve it. You can set that up with a Google account, you can set that up with everything. It is going to be impossible to get to the Apple ID website because it doesn't know our location, but here's the interesting variable. If you've got all those things, you've got a very interesting variable. So the thing I want to make sure you know is you need to make sure that you change all of your accounts. Because if you don't change all of your accounts, you know what's going to happen? They're all going to be uh, no good. So the important thing, Gmail. Get a Gmail. Make your kids happy. Let's be completely honest. Make your kids happy. Get a Gmail account. Now, I showed you Gmail, but I also said Gmail and more. I have a couple little things to show you that are all about the future. Now, this little guy, how many of you saw the latest Star Wars movie? Not the latest one, the actual one, not the made-up one where they just blow up the planet for fun and everybody dies so they don't have to make the story go on anymore. It's called Rogue One, a Star Wars story. But you've got this little guy right here, and this is my remote control BB-8. You remember BB-8 from the movie? I went to buy this. This is the future of a remote controlled car. I went to buy this at the store, BB, and they asked if it was for a child. <sighs> My response was, of course it is. 
<laughs> and I take this guy right here. He's not going to show up on the screen. Ah, here we go. Let me see if he doesn't want to show up on the screen. I've got the Apple thing. But I can go in, and I can actually drive him all the way around the stage. That just looks really cool. Let me, let me find his back here. Hold on. I gotta find his butt. Aw, how cute. And now I'm using my phone to drive him. I'm not gonna drive him off the stage. I'm gonna bring him back. The thing is, the phone is not the, let me bring him back so the people, let me can okay. The phone is not the nerdiest way to do this, believe it or not. What's the thing they always say to use in Star Wars? The Force. So this is going to show you a little taste of what's going on. This is called the Force Fan. This is very difficult to do on the stage, but I'm going to try it anyway. gadget I own, which is my pair of gloves. Now some of you have probably seen gloves that allow you to touch the touch screen like this. I did use these gloves last night because it's chilly. Next cruise we're going to be in Norway, and we got a lot of helipad sailings and beautiful things, but you know how freezing it's going to be in Norway? So these gloves become very, very useful. Now some of you have, hey, BB, shh. Uh, some of you have probably seen, now I'm from Florida, so when I saw this at first, I was absolutely amazed. Gloves that you can touch a touch screen with. They've got a little bit of titanium that's woven into the fabric, so it will conduct and it will let you touch your touch screen. And that's what this glove is. Okay, BB. Okay, okay, so that's what this glove is, but the left glove does something. Let me take off my right glove. The left glove does something completely different. If I have this glove on, and I get a phone call. <laughs> there is a speaker in the thumb and a microphone in the pinky. <laughs> and I can legitimately answer my phone call directly from my glove. And people think I'm crazy. Uh, the hotel director on the ship he always looks at me uh, when I'm around the ship, and he's like, Richard, you're absolutely crazy, but people love you, so we still can't find a way to get rid of you. They've been trying for six years. <laughs> They've been trying for six years, but it's really quite cool to give you an idea of what is going on. Now, I'm trying to get something to hit, so it's a really cool idea to give you an idea of what's going on with the tech. Now, we've talked about Gmail. We've talked about Google Photos. We've talked about all of that. Hopefully what we've done is we've taken all of you and we've moved you oh, let me open my music. We've moved you from the past to the present. So we moved from the past to the present. Now this is the last class for the cruise. But here's the problem. You know what we haven't talked about yet? The future. So tomorrow, in here at 10 15 a.m., we're gonna talk all about the future. And we're all gonna go back to the future. That will be at 10.15 tomorrow. I'll see you right there. Enjoy your day.